spirit of Apostle Paul. I can see that some of you are here in this meeting that are not leaders in the church, but in one way or the other, you are a leader. I always tell us that everyone is a leader because you have your own life to lead first. Understand this. Everyone is a leader. You have your life to lead. Hallelujah. And may you not mislead your life in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to tell us four things today as time permits. The leadership, success, secret of Apostle Paul. We all know Apostle Paul in the Bible. He wrote the greatest number of books in the New Testament. And uh, a great servant of God that he came last. He himself said it. I came last, but I became a super apostle. I came last. I became. So when he talks to, when we talk about the things of God, uh, your, your startup time is not really important. I always tell people that somebody, you, met, so you met somebody in church does not mean you should, you should not be more anointed than that person. Now, that's why in a Pentecostal church, we don't do it according to how long you have been in church. No, we do it based on how deep you are able to catch a revelation. So, Paul did so well, and we're going to look at the things that really helped him. Second Tim uh, Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 to verse 12. Please, I need the other mic. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, 6 to 12. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. From verse 6 to verse 12. Now I read. Now we command you brethren. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you withdraw yourself. From every brother. That walketh disorderly. Look at this. And not after the tradition. Which he received from us. Wait for me here. Wait for me here. You know what Paul was establishing here. He was establishing that we are examples. Now, and what I will, what I wish we are showing you a, a tradition is a style. That is a style that we have shown you. Like I, I, I used to tell us now for God to have given this church, Pastor Prince Will and Pastor Lua Yemisi Afolabi, listen, we are the pattern that God has given you so that you follow. Praise the Lord. And we always tell us look at our family, look at our lives, look at how we live our lives. Look at the kind of, the way we dress. You know, look at the way we do things. Look at the examples we are showing. Increase the volume, please. Look at the examples we are showing. Now, Paul is now saying, anyone that does not follow the tradition, uh, you know, we, has, we have said, that follow after not the tradition which he had received of us. So I want to ask everyone that are leaders here, what have you received from us? I'm not yet preaching, I'm just branching. What have you received from us? You know, yesterday, when I and Evan was going somewhere, he was telling me, and I was touched. He said, in my house, too, Papa, we have established it. I said, what is that? I told my children, we don't watch television anyhow. Yes. He said, anybody that put on the TV, how many strokes of cane? He said, 32 strokes of cane. And I was laughing. Yes, that's our pattern. When he said it, I was touched. His television is saying, no, it could be a form of distraction. There is time for everything. And I told us we decided to do it because we wanted to help our children's academic life so that they would not be too possessed with watching TV and will not uh, focus on the academics. And thank God we have proofs today. Now, look at our marriage too. Now, my wife is not somewhere else and I'm somewhere else. The tradition, Paul is saying the tradition, we are giving you a tradition. We are giving you a style. Follow our style. Hallelujah. Now let's go on. It's not part of the message. I'm only branching. The Holy Spirit just put that right now. Verse 7. Verse 7. Verse 7. For you yourself know how you ought to follow us. Can you see? For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Follow us. We behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Move on. Move on. Move on. Neither did we eat any man's bread for north, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any one of you so that we will not be a burden. Now let's look at, hold it on for me. Number one thing I want to teach us this morning, Paul the Apostle explained how his calling and ministry is not a burden to anyone. Now, and that's the first thing I want us to establish. 
Do not allow your calling, do not allow your ministry to become anybody's burden. Let not somebody be thinking that, ah, uh, ah, uh, is it because of me that God called you? Now, there's a way you live your life that people begin to run when they pick your calls, when they hear you call. That who is that on the phone? Emma Pique, Emma Pique, Emma Pique. You know, I, Pastor Prince, we can say it boldly. My ministry and my calling is not a burden to anyone. That's why you two must live your life in such a way that you should not be anybody's burden. People should not hear that you, you knock the door of their house and they just quickly, you know, bolt the back door and make you feel that they are not available. No! Paul was not a burden. He said, look at how we did our work. We worked hard. And can I tell you this truth? When you make up your mind that you will not become anybody's burden, wisdom to know what to do will come. I'm telling you the fact. One of the things that blocks the people's hands from being productive is when they have a dependency spirit. One man for me, Tima need the phone. One man for me, Tima need the uh, uh, charger. One man for me, Tima need the come back. One man for me, come on for me. One man. When you have that one man for me spirit, you will not be creative with your life. Paul said, look at us. We set a pattern. You know, I and some ministers, they were talking to us they, when, when our car had issue. And we're taking Uber around. I was just ordering Uber, okay, take us home and things like that. In fact, do you even know that Uber is even cheaper than most of this public transport? We ordered one and it took us to our house from here to a level 1,000. He said, that's what is on the whatsoever. I first thought the man didn't see it well. I was thinking he will call us three days after. Now, back to what I was saying. So this... Uh, some of our friends started saying, yeah, should people have members? Why not call them that you need a new car? Are your members have... And the answer I gave them, are they the ones that called us? Whatever people want to do, let it come from the willingness of their heart. If it's not from their will, they will not be blessed. I come again. If it is not from their will, they will not be blessed. Praise the Lord. Do not allow your life, your ministry, your calling to become a body to anyone. Now, let's finish reading that scripture. We'll stop at verse 12. Verse 8. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day. Can you see? That we might not be chargeable to any one of you, so that we will not be disturbing you. Not because we have no power, but to make ourselves an example. Every leader is an example. But to make ourselves an example, one of our daughters here, her shop is exactly opposite my office. Now, anytime I want to buy things, you know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm packing and I want to get either bottled water or bottled drink before I go up to, to my office, I go there and buy. Now, if, how will she feel if she gets back from work and she tells her accountant or the person in the shop, it's a sales boy that is there now, uh, uh, oh, yeah, wash account. Come on, ah, any come on, ah. Oh, my, my bottle drink, meji. Oh, my pure bottled water, come. Oh, look, my papa. Meet him back to Daruko, papa. Ni church, eh, my mom. You know, if you hear it the first day, you will smile. I daddy mean it. If you hear it the second day, you might say, ah, she want to wear it. If you hear it the third day, she ain't to eat it when you mush it. That's your, oh, 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 me, oh, papa, come, come, be come, come. Are you getting what I'm saying? Me, Live the kind of life that nobody will see you as a body. That's one of the things that makes leadership very effective. Live that kind of life that nobody will see you. I was telling one of our sons in church. He, he lives with somebody. He lives with his uncle. And he, anytime we pay him salary, I always tell him, why will you be living in your uncle's house? You will collect salary and you will not be able to say, okay, at least, let me go buy at least. If rice, one or two Congo. Gary, one or two Congo. At least, you know? And when you get home, you drop it. Why can't you do that? He was looking at, he sincerely didn't know. I said, this your uncle is feeding you. This your uncle is taking care of you. Even if you want to drink water, he will give you money for water. You will now collect your salary and go and keep it. I say, it's bad. Go and change. Are you getting what I'm saying? Make up your mind. See, one of the gateways to the top 
is when you make yourself a blessing. Not a burden. People run away from burdens. Let's finish that scripture. Let's finish that scripture. Let's finish that scripture. Let's finish that scripture. Not because we have no power. He say it's not because as your leader I don't have power to do it. But to make ourselves what? An example unto you to follow us. When you are a burden, people run away. But when you are an example, people follow you. Verse 10. Verse 10. For even when we were with you, look at this. This we commanded you, that if any man would not work, neither should he eat. Verse 11. If anyone will not work, neither will he eat. You know, uh, at first, when, we, when I was at that level school, you know, I didn't know that parents have antics. I used to think that everybody's like me, very sincere. They will owe me school fee. And they'll be coming to say, ah, eh, eh, you know, they call me uncle in school. Uncle, eh, you know, I should marry. Until when I started to notice that, see, how will they owe school fees and buy brown new lunch box? How will they owe school fees and buy brown new bag? You see new shoe. They will even come to school and say, Uncle, uniform, you that I go to go, move me. But school fees, eh, nera. A parent came one day and bought the whole textbooks of the child. The whole textbooks, a funny book, the whole textbooks, 19,600. And I told her to pay 20,000 naira for school fees. And she said, ah, Uncle, she mama ring you. Ah, mute te ja we fun wo. Because they are indirectly becoming what? A burden. There is no place a person that is a burden will last. Understand that. Bogbila and Yanwore only last. Bogbila and Yanbi only last. That's why you must make yourself a blessing. Every leader must make himself a blessing. Ibi Kibi Tobawa. Jekamwe Yoma Nin continues. Ah, thank God for him. Thank God for her. Now, that is what, let's finish that scripture. That's one of the success secrets of Apostle Paul. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. What are they doing? Walking not at all, but are what? Busy bodies. Verse 12. Walking not at all. Now, them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work. And eat their own bread. Now let's go see more. See why he decided to become a tent maker. He didn't want anybody to see him as a body. He didn't want anybody to feel that the reason why he's suffering is because he's called. Listen, even we that are servants of God. Do you know that if we live a suffering a life where we are busy struggling, our children will not desire our kind of profession. If God wants to call them, they'll say, God, please call another person. Ah, Allah will me, he has to live life without him, he will pay me. That's why Paul said, I had to become a tent maker. Because at times, some people be asking us, Pastor Prince, hey, Papa, Mama, why are you doing business? Hey, why is it that uh, you, uh, Papa, Papa is in the school, Mama is in the school, they have, they have business, they have. we are doing this because we don't want to become a body to anyone. So that at least we'll be able to meet our needs. So that it'll not be as if when we say come to church, you say, ah, this church that we are going, there's one church like that in Abel Kuta. They said every Sunday, by the time they want to close the service, the servant of God will stand up and I want to bless 10 people today that will fuel my car this week. They will begin to raise money for the pastor's car fuel. That's not a, a, a good way of doing ministry. Make sure that your calling, make sure that your assignment it's not a burden to anyone. See Genesis chapter 14, verse 21. Look at 21 to 24. See what Father Abraham did. Look at what Father Abraham did. Genesis chapter 14, 21 to 24. That's why I see those of you while they're opening the scripture, even if you are living with your sister, you are living with your brother, you are living with an uncle, there must be something you, you should choose to be doing for them that will them to be thanking God that you are in their house. If it means you washing their clothes, there must be something. They will, they will tell you, don't worry, my brother, my sister, don't worry, my, uh, my what again? Don't worry, my friend, don't, don't worry what? I have scotted before, ask my wife now. 
after we, we got married, we had issues with rent, issue, uh, with uh, accommodation. I live with my in-law. I live with my in-law for one year, six months. Sir, ma, I took up so many bills in that house. At times, I will not allow him to pay Nepal bill. I'll quickly go and pay it. At times, when he wants to pay some bills, it's not that he asks me, he's not asking me. I'll just tell him, hey, sir, sir, me, uh, uh, maybe you should use this one to add to what you, are you getting what I'm saying? You must make yourself a blessing if you want doors to be open for you. Where's Genesis chapter 14 from verse 21? Can we have it on screen? And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Let's go on to 24. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth. What's my covenant, verse 23? That I will not take from, I will not take from a tread, even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is, that is thine. Least thou shouldest say what? I have made Abraham rich. Can you see? I won't take anything. So that when my testimony comes, you'll not be saying, ah, uh-uh. ah. I am the one. If not for me, he won't get to where he is. If not for me, he will not be the great dad. If not for me, that's why I say, leaders, I want you to learn. Don't make yourself like the miserable leaders we see around today. Do you know that there are pastors that go to members' houses to collect their tithes? Oh, you don't know? There are member pastors that does that. They'll go to their members' houses and they'll be knocking the door. Oh, should you take at you, The month have ended, we have not seen your tithes. They will now collect the tithe from the members of something that should be brought honorably to God's presence. There are members too that goes to beg in the house of members. We have not eaten. Stop it. Live a life of honor. Abraham said, so that you will not take the glory that belongs to God. I will not make my calling and my ministry a burden to anyone. I, Pastor Prinshell, I wrote it here, can boldly say my ministry and calling is not a burden to anyone. It's not a burden to anyone. I can say it. And I want you two to live like that. My ministry and my calling is not a burden to my wife. It's not a burden to my children. It's not a burden to my family members. I have family members scattered in several places. My ministry is not a burden to them. No, not that I'll call, hello auntie, auntie, hello auntie, me, my jail. All these things, you know what it does? It waters the power of the gospel. It makes them not to want to believe you. When people want to give, let them give to a noble cause. We are sowing seed today. What are we sowing? For enlargement of my steps, oh Lord. That's the seed we are sowing. Not that one person will now, no, eh, 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 no, 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 no. Hallelujah. Talk to me, hallelujah. How did I do it to get to this point? I worked with my hands. I worked with my hands. That's one. Number two, I lived within the provision. Sorry, I live within the provision I have the right to. Now, what's number one? Work with your hands. What's number two? Live within the provision you have the right to. Don't live above your means. Don't live above your means. Live within the, lim- the, the means of the provision you have. You will see that what you have is enough for you. Then work with your hands. A man of God met me at the entrance of the church. I was about driving to park. And he said, sir, I saw you on the poster, on that banner outside, and I knew you are the one. And me and my children and my wife has not eaten since yesterday morning. I said, why? He said, because God has called me. I said, that's a lie. Ministry, boy. And I told her, I said, when our ministry was younger, I washed people's clothes. My wife will wash in the morning, I will iron it in the night. Why? I didn't want to be a body. Please let that child sit down. It's a royal banquet. Thank you. I'll take the child to the children's department now. I've said I will reserve plastic chair for our children. 
royal banquets for those that are matured enough to know how to undo it. Oh, Tony. So back to what we're saying. I told the pastor, and I told him, Pastor, look for what to do. If you need a job, I will talk to somebody to get a job for you. It does not stop you from doing ministry. He left me and said I should give him his number, thinking that he'll call me for the need of a job. He kept sending message. Baba, a job, a shanu for me, a bin power, a jelly lati jung by in lewa. Baba, ah, mulalu bukon, muni ya yami alubuni, or domilongbe, kuti eti runja je lata no. I don't use to respond. I wanted to respond, but my wife said, no, it would be rude for me to preach to him by typing on phone. Because I wanted to tell him, sir, I've told you, go and look for a job. But my wife said, no, it's rude. I should just ignore it. Your, your ministry should not be a body. Work! Now, a time will come when the ministry will take work from you. Yes, they will take secular work from you. Because ministry too is big work. But a time will come that ministry... All this one that we say we have time to share with you, yellow or one to buy your mama on a day shop. Be a mom. Ah, if I wanted to be back, you see, she has not even gone this throughout since uh, was it not since last month? Oh, thing, yeah, dear, dear, but if we get to a point, too, I know. Oh, we cannot say, I'm going to hello for your phone church. But ah, see, they be insane. One of my sons called me. He, you know, said, "Sir, sir, uh, when I heard that your car broke down, sir, I can buy you conveniently a Toyota Highlander. But can you clear it? You need one point two million to clear it." I said, "I don't have capacity to clear it now. I still have capacity to repair the one that I'm using. But that money you want to use to buy it, reserve it." You know, says anytime you have 1.2 million naira to clear, call me. I will buy it, ship it, then you go and clear. I don't want to be anybody's body. He even told me, says, why not call some people in church? Let them team up together. 1.2. I, I, I will not call anyone for that purpose. You to make up your mind that you will not become anybody's body. Could you come on your marriage, sir? On the one thing, one thing, one thing, ah. Grace is often with me. Sin, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Everyone, I remember the Nero. Toba she should be also where ah. Don't be anybody's body. Make up your mind to work with your hands. What was number two? Live within your means. Live within the provision you have right to. Stop making people to want to hide or ignore your calls. Then let's look at number two. It's an, a little bit advanced to number one. Look at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. But by the grace of God, I, I can't hear you. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Look at this scripture. Don't remove it yet. Some of you used to stop at the A part. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, is not in vain. That's where some of you stop. I am what I am by the grace of God. Can I tell you this truth? Grace does not take your responsibility from you. Grace will not take your responsibility. What you are supposed to do by yourself, God will never do it for you. It's a misinterpretation of grace for you to begin to think that you can be made without your commitment. So what's lesson number two? Paul understood that the availability of grace does not nullify commitment to work. I come again. Paul understood that the availability of grace does not nullify commitment to work. 
that you have grace does not nullify your commitment to work. Because some people say, Ulua, Ulua, Ero, Ero, Oh, Mokero, we are business loan, uh, maybe you are a business leader. Now, you know, we are all now, we are both spiritual leaders and business leaders. As we were resuming this term, I asked my wife, I was at the other session, she was at the other session, I was asking her, Did you lose anybody? She said, No, all my people resumed. In fact, I'm attending to a new person now. She asked me the same. I said, no. All the people that I've not seen, that I've not resumed, I've called them one after the other. They, some of them have measles. Some of them are strong. But all my pupils are resuming. Now, because it's a third time, in third time, you don't expect increase. If you get increase in third time, in school business, it's a miracle. In third time, you sustain what you have. Stay here now. Now, Paul is now saying, I labor. Anything you are doing in this life, if you remove labor, you, to prosper will be difficult. To, that's why the leader must be the most hardworking. Because you are the one to do the brain work and devise the work that others will run with. You know, now that I pastor a labor church, I understand what you did that time. You know, that time that Evan was there, he would buy biscuits, buy drinks, that they were coming to report him to me. Evan is spoiling the people. Evan is spoiling the people. Sir, Evan is spoiling the people. Evan is spoiling the people. Uh, the people are coming to church because of food, drink, and... and, and. Do you think everyone that comes to church comes because of Jesus? It is now, listen, I understand better that you need the power of number, one, and you need the power of spirituality. You need spiritual people for some reasons. You, are, you need numerical strength for some reasons too. You cannot become a voice in the society if you don't have numerical strength. I won't call any Lord Church till say room. Imagine Tony. So when I got back to that church, you know, I pastor that place. I apply some of his strategies. We have new people. Ma? But this time, elderly, we don't have youth. I want Arubo, I want Balagba. I want landlords. Work. Leadership is big work. See, the worst part of leadership is for you to maintain where you are. Maintenance is not progress. That's the worst kind of leadership. Ah, pass, I fail. That's the worst result of a leader. Leader to any results, maintenance, worst, worst part me, is a little bit above the one that reduces. So don't sit at that point that we gave you 30 people and you still have the 30 people and you say you are a leader, you have not done well. There must be progress. And for progress, you need to be the one laboring most. Now, listen, like mommy and one other is going to lead music in the, in, the, in the convention. I won't let them bring a composed song. I've list my songs. The first song of the convention is Miracle No Retire Jesus. That's why you sing, sing the first day by Moses Bliss. You, you will sing it like they will think Moses Bliss is here. Because we want to see miracle all through the eight days. So we start with Miracle No Retire Jesus. The last day is that, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Oil on My Head song by, what's his name? Eben. Convention last day. Emma She Kinikon Riazan. Mafu ini bubo yoku toku. Leadership, that's why I'm bringing you for training. It's not an office you sit. It's not an office where you just sit down. We did two projects this week at the Elebo Church. I, was, I successfully finished them yesterday. Because I, I, during the rain, when rain started, I went out. I went inside the rain. I was looking at the source of erosion. Leaders are workers.
Now, those of you in business too, you must understand you are the head here. Things must move. I have about 30-something students and I have about five teachers. No, four teachers and a cleaner. Now, we were, we were working, you know, planning. How do we do to sustain this time? Okay, let's see how we can bring in a French teacher. Let's see how we can bring in music. Let, you know, let's see how we can. And to the glory of God, we're working on how our school can become more model than the ones there. Leadership, me. When others are sleeping, leaders don't sleep. They use time to think of the way forward. Paul said, I, I labor more abundantly. I labor more abundantly. I labor more abundantly. Paul understood, like I said, that the, avail the availability of grace does not nullify commitment to work. Grace does not mean that God will do for you what you should do for yourself. Grace empowers to work harder without knowing the negative effect. That's what grace does. It empowers you to work harder without knowing the negative effect. You won't feel the negative effect, but yet you'll be working. Grace does not nullify deep commitment to work. James chapter 2, verse 18. Grace does not nullify deep commitment to work. Those of you at the Ayegun Church, I will still visit you to know how you are doing. But I purposely left you, you know, because I trust that I've invested so much in you. Not that I don't care. No. Not that I don't want to visit you, but I know I've invested so much. We have Pastor Imo. We have Minister Benga there. Why should I bother myself when both of you are there? Do you understand? So go back and do more work. Look at what James said. He said, yea, ye, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. But me, I will say, show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith, by what? By my works. I will use my works to show you that I have faith. You too will see the results of this year's convention. I, I, I've been working, I've been praying. It was when the choir was rehearsing on Friday, on Thursday, here, that I received the team of the convention. I quickly ran inside, took my paper, and started writing. Lord, who are the ministers you want? I, I was praying. I was writing down names. Leaders must be committed to work. Your department must work. Yes, you are the head of the... Thank, thank God for your life. But you must make sure that there is an improvement. There must be something that people... The, leader, the senior leader will say, Ah, thank God for... Ah, thank God for Dick Infemio. Okay, okay, well. Ah, thank God for him. If not for him. The leader fixed the problem. Commitment to work. Now, those of you that are in the work of the ministry, hear me. Your own commitment must be, hear me, in the place of evangelism, in the place of prayer, and in the place of the study of the word. Those of you that are into ministry, evangelism, use every moment to win soul. Use every moment to improve your work. Use every moment improve your knowledge because hear me you might meet questions as you teach because your members cannot grow beyond you did you hear me when a member grows beyond his pastor he'll change church because he will just continue to feel no matter what the pastor is preaching he or she is not blessed i'm just not blessed there'll be craving for a much higher Revelation. That's what makes people leave church. Apart from other little, little crises. Can we go deeper? Number three. Paul the Apostle in his days on earth was a discipler. A discipler is one who raises people. One who uses what he knows 
to help people grow. Now, everyone that is a leader, can I tell you this truth? John Maxwell said, if you call yourself a leader and you are working alone, you are not a leader. He said, leadership will make you not to be able to resist people from following you. You will just not know why people are always with you. So, if you say you are a leader, who have you raised? You will just not be able to stop. People will always want to come around. Already in our church at a level, our, one of our teachers is already a member. And she came after attending the church three Sundays. Sir, I love this church. Ah, we don't have professional drummer like Adeyemi. We don't have professional keyboardist like Eniola. At times, our drum set is going like this. Our keyboard is going like this. And the praise leader is going solo at the middle. If at times I look at the people, why are they dancing? I won't lie to you. I can only tell you here. I can't tell them there so that they will not know. Engineer Mama Juba, Miss Aoud Mama Juba, Mama B. Koba Lubu. And the mind flicking off beats in it. To what you be about to what you love be. Ah, hey, egg by me. Matu Wubu, even in calling me Joe. So I would like to try to encourage them by pretending as if it is flowing. And she says, I love this church. Do you know why? A disciple has one-on-one -on -one time with people. That's why, too, in your business, go beyond customer relation. You know, there are some, there are some business places that their customer relation, uh, their customer attitude is, is excellent. You always like to return there. Uh, we went to we uh, Holy Spirit. We we went we we bought something at one shop at uh, a level. My wife will remember if I say it now. There was this young guy. He came to attend to us, smiling. I told him to bring bread. He brought the bread. I said I don't want that type. You should go and return. He went. He was just he was just smiling. Daddy killed too fair. You know he was just. I just called him. I said I love your spirit. I love your spirit. Your reception is nah, great. Always smiling. Disciples around, they allow, their attitude draws people closer. If nobody can stay around you, you are a failure as a leader. I'm telling you, if nobody can stay around you, you are a failure as a leader. Stop thinking it is the devil. Your sisters cannot stay around you. No, if you, okay, let's start it from the family ground. Nobody around you in your family can decide to say, and this holiday. I want to go and use this week, stay, spend this weekend with my uncle or with my auntie. Your presence irritates them. You are not a leader. You are not a leader. Leaders, people want to find their way around you. Then there are some of you too. I notice that you have leadership grace, but you don't know what to teach the people. When people come around you, you should make them better than you. We'll talk about that maybe next week. Once. Let's just finish this one. I have one more. Number four, because of time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 33. I want you to see what Paul passed through. Because I want to tell you this truth here. If you're passing through, eh, if you're passing through, will take your belief from you, then you never believed. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Move on. You'll see some things now. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, look at this, more abundantly. 
in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in debt often. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. That's 39. They beat me 39 times, 39 strokes, five times. By the Jews. Three tries was I beating with what? Rod. You know what they call rods? Iron. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. And the she share on Shemon. Ula accident le metha. Lord not to tell or preach. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Where's the deep? In the sea. One night, one day. Move on. Move on. In journeys often, can you see? I was always traveling. In perils of water, in perils of robbers, I was attacked by robbers. In perils by my own people, my own countrymen. In perils of heathens, unbelievers. In perils in the city, in perils of the wilderness. In perils of the sea, in perils among false brethren. Me, I'm in perils of among false brethren now. This one, I'm there now. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Look at all these things he was going through because of two reasons. So his love for God and his call for ministry, into ministry. Move on. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Move on, move on. We don't have all the time. Who is weak? And I am not weak. Who is offended? And I'm not bound. Which means, if you think you are weak, me too have been weak. Oh. If you think you have been offended, eh, eh, kiletiri, tembinu. No, no, let's be sincere. Kiletiri, tembinu. We have raised people, people that we never can ever talk we never thought they could ever betray us. You know when you are raising people, these ones are my children. These ones, I want mommy, I want lay, I want lay you. If you say, lie, lie. You know how it, 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 painful it is? By the time your children grow up eh, and they begin to leave you, you understand what I'm saying. That you say, no, these ones are my own. These ones are my own. But eventually you discover that ah, they are not even part of me. When they begin to show you some, some styles, uh, who are you? Will you control our life? He said, we have, he said, when we talk about being hot, Paul said, I have been hot. Now, some of you are hungry. When my wife was going through operation, how many of you were in the hospital? No, let's be sincere. Let's check it. I, I stayed there in the hospital with her. Only, only, me and her. Then when you have your own, you'll be expecting me to come and stay. Mama and God. Mama one, we've, we've, Sherry, I, I, I now agree with what my mentor said, that ministerial work is heartbreaking, back-breaking, neck-breaking, hand-breaking, nose-breaking, advanced wrist-breaking. Finally, heart-breaking, yes. So Paul was sharing his experience. Some of the things some of us endure for you, you cannot endure it for us. When you were nothing, we endured you. We live one with you. When you become something, you cannot endure us. I have seen people leave church because of fun. Yes. So ministers that are here, ministry is heartbreaking. Oh. His back breaking, his neck breaking. That's why I don't fast for people now. If you cannot fast, if I cannot fast together, I cannot fast for you. That you should go and be eating, I'll be fasting, I won't do it. That you should go and be sleeping, and I'll be praying, I won't do it. I do my bad one. Because that one, I'm bad, but I don't need to know. Let's finish it, let's finish it, let's finish it. 
if you ask uh, some of you that are leaders doing business, you understand. It is people you labor on most that eventually turns back. One of my daughters, one of us in church, she's posted it. Uh, uh, dogs are better than human beings. And she, she's the type that doesn't usually post. And I call her, hello, mommy, do like you Why are you now saying, I won't post in the time? He said, sir, the people that in our school, that they owe me school fees, I'll tell them, don't bother. The people that I, I invested so much on, they move their children. I say it's not new. The same thing that happened in church happened in school. Oh, see, rent to my rawin, not to it. See, what I tell me for that one, my dodge, no fool, and come to me. Listen, let's finish that scripture. There's no time. I'm at it was second service there. Give me five minutes more. Paul now said in verse 30. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concerns my what my infirmity, which my pain. That's the things he has mentioned. So, what is the success, success secret of Paul? What Paul passed through shows us the extent to which the devil tried to take both God and his calling from him, yet he held on. Your love is shown. In how much you are willing to keep loving despite the things you suffer. How do you know a lover? How much you keep loving despite the things you suffer. How do you know a lover? Is You know it by how much things he suffer, yet he keeps loving. How will I, your pastor, be laboring over you, loving you, and one prophet that you go and meet once in a, maybe once a month or once in a week, we will prophesy, you believe that one. But the one that nurture you, but won't stop loving. So, leaders, I'm summarizing. If what you face, we allow, we take what you believed from you, then you never believed. So, it means that in leadership, you will face something. You know, at times I go, I, I look at what mommy and faces in the choir. People that should, can, that should not be able to talk to her. People that should not be able to insult her on a normal ground. That if they should look at class, they are not in a class. But because she's choir coordinator. They open their mouths and say rubbish. But because she wants let this thing just continue to grow. That's pain of leadership. Bro. Because she cannot prepare song by herself and sing it by herself. At times I will feel like, let me just enter that place. I said, no, no, leave me. Don't scatter it. Have you learned something today? Yes, Are you sure? Yes, now, those of you that will not be coming for the second service, you are the ones that will anoint. Come to the altar here. Those of you that will not be coming.